guys, we're here today with Eric from Dark Matter X, and he's created an entirely new adjustable shifter assembly for this beautiful 2010 Subaru WRX STI. So we're gonna check out exactly how that was done, what it took to make that, and then we're gonna take it for a spin. It's gonna be super off. Eric, great to have you here. Cool. How you doing well, today? Thank you for having me out today. Uh, awesome opportunity. I'm Eric, owner of Dark Matter X, a uh, five-year veteran. Uh, started developing this product uh, on my way out the door. So we've got the stock assembly, the first prototype, the working prototype, and in your car, uh, you drove here with a mostly 3D printed that prototype. I basically turned it from a fully functioning prototype out of 3D printed material to a prototype out of half CNC, half 3D printed material to get me by in the meantime until the production model is made all out of metal. What, what inspired this project? Why did you get into this? What got you making aftermarket parts? Well, I kind of always liked seeing uh, problems and coming up with my own solutions. And getting into 3D printing really enabled me to do that in the real world, identify a problem right. and create my own solution for it almost immediately. And so when I was getting another one of my Subarus and modifying it, I wanted a better shifter. And there wasn't really one that was gonna meet my needs on the market. And so I made my own. I, yeah. I sat there and I kind of studied all the you know problems that I saw with the OEM shifter. And I came up with my, all my own solutions for it. And I really wanted to make this thing for most Subaru drivers could buy it and adjust it and manipulate it how they wanted it. Mm -hmm. Rather than buying one that's already pre-engineered and preset to a certain height and adjustment, and then they're kind of stuck with it. Yeah. So anyone can get this and tailor it to their needs in their car. But what can this do that's different from the stock shifter? What I basically thought of was creating a system where you could adjust the shift knob height without using any tools and incorporate all kinds of other features into the shifter. But yeah, this is the leather yeah. boot collar. The leather just sits up okay. right here in the car. And you basically just rotate this counterclockwise or clockwise right there in your car. And you can, you can raise and lower the height of the shifter, oh which effectively adjusts your throw, but it also adjusts the leverage that somebody has on their shifter. So some people like it lower, some people like it higher. Best of both worlds. Anyone in rally cross, they, they'll have like the uh, the shifters like right next to the steering wheel. Right, right. And then the other part of this is where it actually connects to the shift linkage. So this part stays in the car. This is a direct connection into the transmission from this U-joint here. This is what comes out of the car. So that used to connect right here and now it just connects yeah. straight onto that shifter. And there's two positions there that independently adjust the throw of the shifter. I used to buy a short throw shifter and then an extender if I wanted it taller, things like that. Now it's right, like right. by this and it's adjustable in one part. It's pretty cool just off the bat, even if it <laughs> yeah. was a one off, but you're making this for actual production, right? You're gonna, yes. these are going to be for sale. These are the prototypes that are 3D printed and then you're CNCing everything and putting them on the market. Yes, so there's 100 pre-orders available. The really big advantage right now of being able to 3D print this is this is gonna be an A356 T6 aluminum casting. While I'm waiting on that, it's a very long process getting something sand casted. It's literally in my car right now. It's never had a strength issue. I've driven thousands and thousands of miles, Oregon, up and down I-5, uh, straight 3D printed car parts, and it works, it works awesome. The 3D printing basically enabled me to start learning uh, at my own pace, affordably, in my house, and then basically prove my design. This, I mean, this is one of the first ones. Again, there's thousands of miles on this thing. And then at that point, once I proved the mounting points and working around the geometry of the car, mm -hmm. and then I was able to go to the machine shop, they made it for me out of metal. So less expensive, more accessible. You can have it in your house and, and make right. prototypes and learn at your own pace. I mean, it's crazy. What kind of printer are you using? So I started with the uh, Creality Ender 3 Pro, but I kind of got to a point where I was at the limits of that machine. Mm -hmm. So I upgraded to the Ultimaker S3. Nice. And that thing has been running 24 seven for literally over a year. So I bought an enclosure for it. I went a little overkill and I put my own thermal kind of like blanket on the inside, doing everything I could to get the best, strongest, you know, inner, layer to layer adhesion, just the best possible part. That's where Vision Miner also helped me 
along that journey because when I got the filament drying kit, I was able to get the filament like literally completely dry, yeah. you know, and you extrude it, there's no bubbles, it's yeah. just a string, totally dry. Now I've, I've been able to put these in, there's a handful of Subarus out there that literally are driving around ah. right now with this in it. Ah. And you know, it's just, uh, it's just from all those, all those little things, having an enclosure, having a preset profile, right. like not having to worry about stuff gets you the best, uh, Best product, yeah. I mean, it yeah, really yeah. is. It's about, you know, the 3D printing isn't just, you know, buy a machine and grab a spool and throw it in there. There's there's a process involved still. So like our drying kit, it's a vacuum chamber and a vacuum pump. And you take your hot filament out of the oven, put it in there, or even put that on a hot plate and pull vacuum. And it does an incredible job of just removing all the excess moisture. And you can store your filaments in it. Ours are designed to fit the big two and a half kilo spools. So I cheaped out uh, the first time I, I, I balled out, bought you guys this filament drying kit and it was awesome. And I was like, I need more of these chambers. Yeah. So I went on Amazon, uh, which was you know my first mistake. And I bought the cheapest, yeah, whatever the gallon container yeah, the, is. Super um, gallon, yeah. A couple weeks ago, I actually went in to, to go work on this. The chamber had been under pressure and I came in and it was just all crinkled. It imploded on itself uh, and uh, I was uh, really disappointed there. Quality so, guys, we do quality. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go out to your Subaru and actually see this puppy in action. All right. Okay, all right. All right. So right out the gate, it doesn't look like anything's changed. It looks stock. I can tell that's 3D printed for now. So anyone can get the shifter and just bolt it right into their car with no modification. Just leather boot goes right around it. You can just put it right in uh, after you remove the OEM assembly. Okay, and that's like four bolts on the bottom and a one shift linkage? So there's four bolts on the bottom and then there's an eight millimeter bolt that goes through an existing part connecting to the transmission. Got it, got if it. If somebody wanted to utilize the shortest throw setting though, mm -hmm. then they would need to re further remove one of the parts on the chassis. It's just like this little metal flange. It used to hold like a little rubber membrane. It doesn't really do okay. anything anymore. Yeah. They either need to modify that just by like notching it out or just take it out of the car, which is what I did. So okay. we just pull the shift knob off here. Got it. And then I can pull the leather boot out of the interior. And I can show you what's underneath it here comes right off okay so on the bottom there we have the fully cnc'd production version of the shifter and then the upper assembly here is mostly still the functional 3d printed prototype stuff Got to it. continue the development and testing of it while we wait for the rest of the parts to be made this is going to be adjusted slightly for the production model uh, but just just little little changes here and there to you know make it more comfortable or easier to use. Right. So so even with the shift boot on in the car while you're driving, even you can just turn this knob and make that whole. Oh, I do it all the time. Make that whole part go. <laughs> I don't off. recommend it, but <laughs> I thoroughly want to test and design and make this thing the absolute best that it can possibly be. So I'm constantly testing it and seeing how it wears and. Wow. trying to find you know the weaknesses and that's what i've been doing for you know about a year and a half with it i mean that's a very short short throw yeah, yeah, yeah. shifter right there This is really awesome. Thank you so much for coming down and sharing this with the community and everybody. It just shows like how much can really be done with functional 3D printing and materials like carbon fiber nylon and, and just 3D printers that you're doing in your home, in your shop, in your university, wherever you are. It's incredible the possibilities. And you weren't, you weren't even an engineering background and you ended up creating this and basically creating an entire company out of it. Uh, I think anything's possible if you're willing to put your mind to it, and you know this is the this is the proof right there. God. You know you just keep trying, and you're motivated, and you know put in the work, then you'll eventually uh, you'll eventually get there. So that is the and, truck. And you guys really motivated me in the in the beginning with uh, one of your uh, NASA videos mm -hmm. uh, when you guys dumped out all the old prints, and I was yeah. in the middle of like trying to figure out my shifter. So 
I yep. am just so stoked to be here and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Dude. Come share my experiences and how yeah. 3D printing can literally help uh, anybody. <laughs> Totally, dude. Well, thanks for coming down. Yeah. And it, you know, it really is a testament to, you know, uh, failing your way to success. You're gonna have some bumps along the way and you gotta learn from those and then go on to the next version and make it better. And just that's life, that's business, that's jujitsu, that's just about everything, mm -hmm. especially 3D printing. So dude, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you guys for watching. Please share this video if it inspired you and let us know in the comments below what questions you have for Eric here or anything about functional 3D printing. And if you want to get into 3D printing or need to get into 3D printing, contact us, go to our website, give us a call. We're here to help you find the right solutions for your application and dream. So once again, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks thank you. for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.